journey continues and of course that means catching a ferry this time from Kenna Craig to Port Ellen which can only mean one thing we are heading for Isla and yes the infamous Macri awaits Yes, it is the final episode of Ferry Golf and uh, what a place to finish at, the Macri. This place is unreal and I say unreal, I played nine holes here last night and uh, it blows my mind as just to how good this place is. A fairly new golf course in terms of the lay of the land that we're playing right now. You play the first two holes, that par five that you're watching me play now is a real interesting design as is a lot of the course that you'll see to come and then you get to this third tee you virtually stood on the beach, you can hear those waves and a cracking little par three and the round really gets going. Go ball, go ball, oh, played one hand, look at that, that is absolutely, the location of this golf course is unreal, as is the course which I'm about to show you. Right, one massive feature of the course is these rolling fairways, the change in elevation and height from where you've sort of, we've just teed off five wood on uh, four found middle of the fairway which is good but then you'll see from where I'm stood here you see the tip of the flag and when I get down into this gully the flag will disappear and you're very much reliant on your yardage and hoping for the best you'll also notice when we film up on the green that there's uh, the green slopes from front to back so everything's chasing away from you here it's fantastic bit of design and as I'm stood here I can literally just see the top so we've got to try throw this one up and land it soft but it's got to be the right number. I don't think it's bad distance wise and that should get a little bit of a kick from left to right as well. We'll find out when we get up there. But well, the course design is one big massive feature that I absolutely love you.
Looks like the third, it's, uh, you, well you're virtually on the beach, it's an unreal backdrop. Um, I played this old yesterday, it's a clever, clever design as are many of the old 303 yard par 4, that sounds easy doesn't it, but believe me when you're staring down this. Heavy rough all the way down that left hand side if you wanted to take the, uh, the driver out and attack the green and if you do go on that line, anything sort of at the pin, you've got two bunkers which are left of centre, one long right of centre and believe me, there's not a lot of fairways to it. I went driver yesterday and uh, didn't do so well. I'm going to play just a five iron today and see if I can hit a patch of that green stuff. Again, is that line too tight? Go ball. You can see that the course is very special, but then everything about the Macri is special. From the minute you arrive, you're met with an elegant decor, but in a very relaxed, informal environment. The bar and restaurants are overlooking the golf course and the Atlantic. And it's also a fine place for breakfast, following a night in luxurious accommodation. Right, made our way to the ninth hole and uh, the wind has picked up and unfortunately the sun hasn't come out because I'm uh, really disappointed in a way that we can't show this course off in all its glory in terms of bright sunshine. But to be honest with you, it's now typical Lynx weather. We're fighting the elements, we've got the wind coming in off the sea, you can see those waves crashing. And we've got a typical Lynx par 3, just 120 yards. It's surrounded by bunkers, but that wind is gusting in and it makes it really difficult to play. Pin is tucked in behind that bunker. We'll try and play something middle of the green, I think, and play in a 9-iron. Let's see if we can keep this one down a little bit, eh? Well, I didn't keep it down. I punched it up, but we got middle of the green. Here's the yardage right. Sit. You know what, I think it was a safe play, but another, not only a fantastic golf hole, and you've seen plenty of that from the drone footage and all the stuff that we've put up so far, but it's, it's how good the design of the hole is, but then coupled with the backdrops is what makes this place so special. It's absolutely breathtaking, virtually on every position you stand on, anywhere on the golf course, which is, let's be honest, that's a rarity, isn't it? I just mentioned it on the tee, but why I love par threes are Lynx par threes that are well designed. Apart from all the different cameras that lead and feed into this green, and then out the complexity of the green itself, getting the ball down when you're on the green. We've just passed a bunker to the left. We've got one on the right. Anything that lands either in the bunker or kicks off the bank, then you're way away from that flag where it's protecting that pin position. You go long, you've got another bunker pitched at the back end, and when you stood on the tee, you can't quite see it. You miss right and you really go after this flag and then there's another little pot bunker just hidden away that you can probably see now. So it's again, everything in the modern game is about length, how long holes or long courses are. But then you get on a Lynx course and you get a classic par three at 120 downhill, play further back as well obviously, but 120 downhill and it's still an achievement to walk off with a par three. You know, I think you can always tell uh, how much I like a golf course because I don't do as much talking as I normally do and I concentrate on playing the course itself and that's what it does as well is that it's, I think I mentioned earlier, it asks a question of every part of your game and again that's I think what is good design so whether you're playing off the tee, whether you're playing your irons in, whether you're playing your short game, your bunker play, your putting, 
everything is asked a question it demands of your game but it's also an interesting one where it's relatively um it's playable so it's kind of like you've got four different tee boxes i think to play from in terms of yardages which i think is a great idea every club should be playing from that nowadays so you play based on your ability so if you want to take this thing off the black tips then do so you've got, got the blue i've been playing off the white and there's yellows as well so there's lots of options in terms of where you play from um, but again sorry the reason i put the camera on i got a bit lost there was a uh, 139 little par three but as you can see from the close of the camera we've got the thing is like the uh, it's almost waves bigger than we've seen in the sea and if you don't get this one on the right tier uh, and that pin is tucked right onto the left and again 139 yards it's still playing incredibly difficult we're down breezy you've got the the sea is right at the back of us um, even though the flag looks still oh come on be right be right ball oh ah watch this come back now yeah it's still trickling down it was right at the flag and it's exactly what i just said there it looks so good in the air but that yardage being wrong all of a sudden just a yard or two short it's back down the slope and a difficult two put but there again you know you think that's so good and you're smiling all the way and even though it comes back down the slope it still leaves a big smirk on your face because you know you're playing a proper golf course and like i said earlier that demand on your game every little bit of it well first of all to the uh, that's the pitch mark and uh we literally hop forward to the top of the slope but you can see how severe it is back down and uh that's no easy two put and then to the camera at the back of the green just look behind me what a backdrop honestly i can't tell you how good it is to play this golf course and just have a look around you let's see if we can make two from here and walk off with a par ah the pace was good the line just darted off to the left straight away and i've left one of those fiddly three footers let's be positive yeah i'll take that any day of the week and always happy with a par but if you miss it just have a look around and just see what's going on honestly this place is just blows my mind as to how pretty this place is you know well it's our round is drawing to an end we're on 17 and we had a chat with this one with the pro before we went out and it's a severe dog leg from right to left so uh we'll take heed of the uh, message that was given and there's a red and white marker post that you can see um he said you want to go completely left if you look at your sort of course and route planner because the hole itself the green is directly over there his words were don't do that go for the red and white marker and uh, that's what we'll try and do it's one of few i can't even remember a, a blind shot that we've played on the course oh, and you've played one played one just coming in bouncing from right to left so david hopefully we've got that one right well you know i said listen to the pro i must have half listened because uh, when i said it was a severe right to left and i was pointing over the hill where you wanted to go to I got that bit completely wrong it's a left to right dog leg and it is quite severe the main point is we followed the red and white marker and we didn't uh, bite off more than we can chew and uh, we've got 110 left into this hole nestled away there in the dunes oh be right yardage be right go in oh that's a great finish on 17 hopefully we can roll that one in and uh, a birdie
Well, 18th tee, I've got to say, I am super impressed as just how good this place is. And uh, not just the golf course, the whole facility is just exceptionally good. You've seen where we stayed and uh, where we ate our food and uh, where we slept. It's incredible, honestly, from the minute you arrive, they're incredibly uh, friendly people at work here look after your every need and then you get onto the golf course and I've repeatedly said about how good these backdrops are and uh, what a super place to play golf. The one thing I'll add to what's already been said is that there's very rarely I play a golf course where I think that it's got 18 good golf holes and I think that with this, oddly enough, bar in the first which is a very sort of slow warm up hole, you don't see a great deal off that first tee, I'd love to see a raised first tee because there's no massive excitement on the first tee, but the minute you start to get round from the second and third, you really do know you're at a special golf course. Let's see if we can get one away anyway at 18. Par five to finish. Back into that clubhouse. And then we'll have something really nice to eat and drink again. <laughs> oh, it's a ball to finish and. That makes it all a little bit better, doesn't it? So we've spent six days on three ferries, traveling across land and sea, four golf courses, some incredible views, and a golfing adventure like no other. I'll see you soon, Scotland.